This is the first time in 30 years that a Guarneri of this quality is coming to the market at auction. The Baltic is a striking violin. There's something rich about it. The detail, the personality, there's a vibrancy that you won't forget. What I like about this instrument is that it has a very powerful and very clear sound, but it also has layers of colors and a beautiful tone. There is still so much to discover, but it feels really powerful, but still very warm. Giuseppe Guarneri del Gesù is one of the greatest violin makers in history. He worked in the most iconic town in Italy, in Cremona, and he was part of the trifecta of Stradivarius, Bergonzi, and Guarneri's in the mid 18th century. The production of Guarneri del Gesù is very limited, and that's part of the value and the mystique around him. His production, unlike Stradivari, was small, and we know about 150 instruments made by him. The Baltic was made in 1731. 1731 is an extremely important year for Werner del Gesù. His father, due to an illness, stops making violins, and Werner del Gesù takes control of the workshop, moves to a different location, and becomes part of the center of Cremona, along with the Stradivari and Bergonzi. After 1731, he starts changing the model. We see changes in the size of the instruments. We see changes in the shape of the F-holes. The Baltic determines the beginning of a new chapter in Del Gesù's life. And it's the first instrument that we see a transformation. We see an identity of his own craft in this violin. The Baltic still structurally remains in an extremely pure state of preservation and still retains a lot of this richness. There's an intensity covered with elegance. There's a vibrance in the wood that you can hear as well. I love it. It's amazing. It's very open. I feel like it needs to be played and needs to be heard. What is unique about the Baltic is how it's been preserved. It's a very colorful provenance and really adds to a beautiful history. The Baltic name was given by the Wilitzers as a reference to the first known ownership of the instrument. One of the most moving part of its history is Dr. Sochakevsky. He was a German doctor in the First World War and he as a Jewish person in Germany, he went through a very intense journey where he had to escape to Brussels. From Brussels, he had to escape to Brazil, and the violin was part of this journey. We have a record that a legendary firm, W.E. Hill in London, they had possession of the violin, and they later sold it with the help of Wilitzers to someone in America. The most recent owner of the Baltic from 1979 is Sao Wing Lam, now his family. He was a businessman, but his passion for music led his life. Mr. Lamb had a great taste for fine instruments, and what is consistent about his collection is the quality, but the Baltic definitely stands on top of the list. He brought people together to share music, whether it was through his gatherings at home or contributing financially to help young musicians. His sense of generosity, it was something that I think really affected a lot of people, and I'm glad that this violin is gonna put some light into who he was. Great instruments have real soul because the people that have been playing on those instruments have left part of their personality and we're passing it on to the next generation and this is really a case with this beautiful instrument. Of course it should 
keep being played and being on stage and making people happy with the sound. To be part of the family of dealers like W. Hill or Wulitzers, to participate in the history of a violin like this, for Tricio, it's something that is an honor, it's a responsibility, but it's something that I feel extremely proud of.